So let's say you arrive at your diagnosis. How are we going to treat it? Um, the treatments, like I said, are not necessarily cures, but they're ways to help patients live with the symptoms uh, and reduce the symptom burden from a day to day to help them try to live kind of more of a no more normal life. I'm going to go through a bit of a protocol. Um, this should be monitored, like I said, by a healthcare professional who's experienced in treating POTS patients. I will often refer my POTS patients out. I don't specialize in POTS. I'll be able to potentially pick it up, but I'm going to refer that patient out. I'm not going to be managing that POTS case necessarily, right? So you have to try and find the right person who has experience in dealing specifically with POTS because there's a full protocol to follow. Something that I would encourage you to look up is some research by Dr. Benjamin Levine. There's a protocol out there called the Levine Protocol for POTS. Um, this is where I gathered um, much of this information. And um, so I'm just going to go through it with you here. But if you want further information, check out the Levine Protocol. There's all sorts of great information on sites like the Mayo Clinic, um, etc. So first thing is fluid intake. One of the potential causes of POTS is hypovolemia, meaning low blood volume. Increasing fluid and salt intake can increase blood volume and have a really profound effect on POTS. So somebody with POTS, the best thing you can do is start increasing your fluid intake to at least two to three liters of water a day. Two to three liters of water. And this doesn't mean getting up and chugging a liter of water at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This means drinking a glass of water every couple hours throughout the day to try and hit your quota of two to three liters of water per day. The other thing is increasing sodium intake. Now, this should be done very gradually. You shouldn't just start hammering loads of salt you know, all at once, but again, should be monitored by a healthcare professional and you should increase your salt intake anywhere from 3,000 up to 7,000 up to 10,000 milligrams of sodium per day. Now to put this in perspective, what does that mean? Well, milligram, uh, 2300 milligrams of sodium is about the equivalent of a teaspoon. So you're looking to get up to seven to 10,000. What the best way to do this and what Dr. Levine suggests uh, through his protocol is to put this into a bag at the start of the day. So you have your kind of daily quota and then you know how much is in there and then just sprinkle some on your food throughout the day to arrive at that daily quota. Like I said, don't have your patients do this all at once, but you can gradually increase this throughout the day. So that will increase blood volume and increase blood pressure and potentially counteract that tachycardia, especially if it's hypovolemic. Compression stockings, wearing compression stockings can help to increase venous return of blood back to the heart and that can improve your circulation and potentially also counteract the effects of POTS. Having a balanced diet, eating smaller meals throughout the day and avoiding uh, things like simple carbohydrates which would spike your blood sugar levels and potentially create these fluctuations in blood sugar. So having kind of a balanced meal um, with a lot of good protein in it can keep your blood sugar stable and can again counteract some of the negative effects of POTS. Next, staying upright. So patients with POTS often obviously because of what happens to them when they're upright, they feel uncomfortable with being upright. One of the problems with going into a lying or recumbent position is that over time you actually become more deconditioned and make your condition worse, right? One of the inciting events of causing POTS can be prolonged rest and inactivity. So by you avoiding being upright because of how you feel, you actually make your condition worse in the long run. So what might feel good in the short term actually creates long-term loss right? Short-term gain for long-term loss. And I think that goes with a lot of things, right? It's easy to eat, you know, the processed foods. It's cheaper, it's quicker, but in the long run, your health actually suffers, right? Whereas, you know, preparing your own meals is time consuming and things, but it's actually healthier in the long run, right? So a lot of things we do in life is short-term gain, but for long-term loss. So you need to flip that and say short-term loss for long-term gain. And what they recommend is to remain upright throughout the day. 
and only go into a supine or recumbent position when you're ready to go to sleep. And it, part of Levine's protocol is he actually recommends that you elevate the bed, the, the head of the bed. So you take the legs at the head of the bed and elevate them between four and 10 inches off the floor so that your head actually remains elevated throughout the night. Because what that does is it keeps you elevated um, and it keeps your blood having to circulate and it kind of helps to regulate things and keep your um, keep things in, in check. So important, right? Because as every time you go supine, you, you're potentially setting yourself back. So by sleeping like this, you're potentially negating that, that issue. And finally, the best exercise or the best medicine known to man is exercise. Um, so this may take a while for people. So those that have POTS that say I have been exercising, but it's been taking me forever. The typical protocols for POTS are anywhere between three and six months just to kind of get through the initial, you know, protocols to be able to get that heart rate up to any significant degree. The first thing before you start any type of training protocol, you're going to have to figure out, you know, your, your, your training zone. And there's some heart rate calculations that have to be made. Uh, it's a little bit complicated, so I'll probably have to do some sort of Instagram post on it or something so that it's, it's there in, um, in a written format so that you can actually check it out. Um, I might actually do a blog post on this topic just to have that information there. Um, but the first thing you do is you determine what your max heart rate is. Now to calculate max heart rate, it's 220 minus age in years. So if you're 20 years old, your max heart rate would be 20. If you're 30, your max heart would be 190, so on and so on. So it's 220 minus your age in years. Then you want to determine your heart rate reserve, which is your maximum heart rate, which is a 220 minus your age, minus your supine resting heart rate. So when you're lying on your back, what's your heart rate at complete rest? Your lowest heart rate achieved at complete rest is your resting heart rate. Then your max heart rate is 220 minus your age. So you take your max heart rate and subtract your supine resting heart rate, and then you will get your heart rate reserve. You multiply your heart rate reserve by 75%, and that will get you your maximal steady state heart rate. So once you kind of get bumped up, your steady state heart rate is basically 75% of your, um, your um, heart rate reserve. Um, then what you do from that is you subtract your, um, you, or sorry, you take another 75% off of your maximal steady state range. And that now gives you what's called your base rate. And your base rate is where you start your exercise protocol on. Now the protocol for POTS is essentially three days of cardio with weight training interspersed between those days. So let's say you go Monday, Wednesday, Friday of cardio, you're going to do Tuesday, Thursday with weights. The cardio should be anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes at your base rate. Now, because patients with POTS have trouble being in upright positions, typically the recommendation for the first three months or so is to be in more supine positions. So things like swimming, rowing, um, recumbent cycling, Okay, those are all things that you're in somewhat of a supine or recumbent position and is easier to tolerate for that because now you're starting to build your uh, exercise tolerance in a position that is comfortable and achievable for you. The next few months, then you graduate into upright cycling, maybe an elliptical and a treadmill with no incline on it. After that, then you can progress into a treadmill with an incline on it. Okay, and your your ranges of heart rate, you've started at your base rate, but you're gradually progressing into maximal steady state range and even higher as you get more and more into it. So exercise protocols for patients are only as good as the compliance that they have towards it, right? It depends on how bad you want to get better. Right? Anyone can provide you with an exercise protocol, but if you're not going to follow that exercise protocol, you're not going to have the results of it. So like anything, if you have an infection and I give you an antibiotic and you don't take that antibiotic and you wonder why you still have an infection, you can only be mad at yourself. So any, as anything in life goes, you're going to be uncomfortable 
with this because it's a challenge because it's pushing you to where you're kind of you know uncomfortable and so you have to kind of get comfortable with the feeling of being uncomfortable right like being upright throughout the day uh, trying to eat healthy meals trying to get a good night's sleep trying to drink three liters of water a day trying to increase your salt intake um, okay so as with anything in life like you know success you know, starting a company, it depends on how much you stick with it and how bad you want it. Uh, and that's going to be the determining factor whether or not you get better. All right. The treatment is not a cure, but it's a way to help minimize your day to day symptoms. The example that I've used before in previous episodes is my daughter's cashew allergy. We have to give her little bits of cashew every single day and over time we increase the amount of little cashew bits we're giving her. So there's a solution. She's now up to 45 times, 45 times her original dose. So we started down here with this and now she's taking 45 times her original dose every single day. And we're only halfway there. So she's gonna be up to, I don't even know how many times dose by the time we're done this thing, because every time we go in, we, they double her dose. So it's exponentially becoming more and more and more. Here's the kicker, it's not a cure. This does not cure her, but it exposes her immune system over time in a safe way to the things she's allergic to. So that in the future, if she comes across some food that has it in there, her immune system doesn't attack her and she doesn't go into anaphylaxis. But she has to take, after she's done this protocol, which is six months to a year long, depending on how long you take to get through it, after she's done this protocol, she has to eat cashews every single day of her life to maintain her level of immunity so that she does, her immune system doesn't react. Right, Every single day, she'll have to do this. Now, this is the same thing for patients with POTS. If you do an exercise protocol and then you stop, you are going to lose the gains that you had. So this is not a treatment or a cure, right? This is something that will allow you to, if you keep up with it and stick with it, allow you to have a, a, a minimized amount of symptoms in your day-to-day -day life and help you to feel better uh, and live a more normal life. There's also some medications that can help. They're very patient specific. So this is something you'd have to have kind of individual conversations with your doctors to try and see which medications might be right for you. Um, some medications that work for one patient uh, have negative effects for other patients. And so sometimes it can be some trial and error and figuring out what works for you.